Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to a brand new video. So today, Larry and I are sitting down to tell you guys the results of our embryo, the little Nemo embryo. Nemo. And just reflect on the last egg retrieval in this IVF cycle. So if you're new and stumbling across this video, we, when did I have that procedure? It was on leap day. So February 29th, I had my egg retrieval procedure. Mm -hmm. They retrieved 11 eggs, which is really exciting news. And then 10 of those 11 were mature. Six of them had fertilized. One of them was made it to that blastocyst stage. And then my doctor called and let us know the results of that blastocyst. Unfortunately, we got the bad news that the embryo was not PGT normal. And of course, as soon as I heard the doctor's voice, I looked at Larry and I was like, I just, I just knew because the doctors don't usually call. It's usually the nurse that you talk to. If the doctor is calling, that means usually bad news. So yeah. She's right about hearing the doctor's voice. Yeah. Yeah. So basically he called, he gave us the news and then he did say, um, technically this embryo is called a mosaic embryo. And he is afraid and in his area of expertise that if we transfer this embryo that it will lead to a miscarriage. I did ask him because we only have one vial of Larry's sperm left. I asked, can we please like freeze this embryo just in case we go through another cycle of an egg retrieval? Can we please try and use this embryo just in case? And he said, yes, I'll freeze the embryo. Um, but he really, really, really said this it's not looking good for this embryo. He's like, I really want to put you on another cycle and try again for a PGT normal embryo. So it was very devastating. I was very upset. I looked back at that dream that I had and then I looked back at that feeling, that gut feeling that I had, which I shared with you guys, that I had this gut feeling that none of them at the end of this was going to become, like they weren't going to be PGT normal. So... There has been a new plan put in place and um, I'll just talk to you guys about it here. I was going to do it in a separate video, but that just doesn't even make sense. So I'm just going to do it all here. Let's do it all here. Let's just do it all here. So the new plan in place, they're putting me on, let me, I took, I took a screenshot. Microdose Lupron protocol. So I asked for like clarification on that and how it different from differed from the last protocol. And I'm going to read what they wrote verbatim just so I don't mess it up. Um, so it's called a microdose flare or microdose lupron flare protocol. In place of the Ganarelix and Cetratide you used in the last protocol, you will use microdose lupron. The microdose lupron starts before you start any other stimulation meds. The idea is that the lupron will stimulate the pituitary to release follicle stimulating hormone to wake up, she put in quotes, the ovaries before stimulation starts, which is the gonal and menopure injection. We hope to see better ovarian response as a result and continued use of the microdose Lupron then saturates receptors in the pituitary, preventing ovulation, functioning similar to the Ganarelix and Cetratide that you used in the last protocol as those were used to prevent ovulation. So there's going to be more shots this time and my dosage is a lot higher this time for the Gonal F, that red eject pen, and then the Menapure, that burning horrible one so yeah I was not again I, I just feel like the IVF journey I'm always in that lately I'm in that state where I'm always I feel like saying I didn't expect that I didn't expect that we would be here I didn't think that we would be doing another egg retrieval I really didn't um, but we can do it but we can do it it's just you know in the IVF journey guys like nothing really and I always reflect back to how how grateful and simple and lucky we were with Liam because he took the first time minus that mishap where the doctor couldn't get into my uterus to transfer the embryo we will ignore that whole thing but yeah so um this will be my third egg retrieval procedure which I am prepping for now I had to stop my birth control I was on birth control uh, to prep my body for an embryo transfer, but we're not transferring 
an embryo. So I had to stop that. I have already started my period and now we need to wait for my next period after this one, which is the post birth control period to start. So we're on a whole nother cycle, a whole nother waiting. I need to order meds and it's going to be a whole process through, you know, the month of April and May. Again, we're just going to repeat the process. So if you're going through this with us or you're thinking about doing it, just remember the answer that we got when we said, is this normal? The immediate response was, oh, there is no normal in this journey. Mm -hmm. There's no normal. So you can hope, but science is science and it's not exact. Mm -hmm. That's why they call it a practice. This is true. Yeah, I'm starting to get to that point too where I'm thinking like something's wrong. <laughs> Only because they're putting me on like the protocol for somebody basically who is a low responder and has low egg quality and like concerns of endometriosis is happening and like kind of things like that. So now I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like, is it because I'm getting older? Obviously I'm 32, I'll be 33 this year, but it's just crazy how like time can really alter egg quality and just all of that stuff. So hopefully this works. Hopefully this gives us more of a chance. And I was, I was really adamant on holding on to this, this little Nemo embryo and in hopes that if, if we need to, and there's no hope for this next cycle that we can try, which he didn't really seem to, I don't know. He just, I don't know guys, it's complicated. It's sad. It's just sad. We found out the news like a couple days ago. We've had a couple of days to grasp and come to terms with that. So now it's just on the up and focusing on what's next. That's all you can do in these kind of journeys and these kind of situations is and in, in any journey and any health kind of situation, you get your news and all you can do is prepare for what's next and hope for the best. So that's what we're doing. We're gonna take it day by day. And thank you guys for your support. Thank you guys for your prayers and your well wishes through this last cycle. It's just, it's sad that it ended the way that it did. But we love you guys. Thank you for watching and we'll see you guys again in the next video. Bye. Bye.